good to have you join us today on this edition of Business Daily. I'm Lee Ji-yoon in Seoul. Before we get started, let's first get a quick check of today's highlights. Korea is planning a $17 billion stimulus package to cushion risks from corporate restructuring and Britain's recent vote to leave the European Union. The new expanded Panama Canal opened recently and it's expected to increase global trade routes and shipping capacity. But Korean shippers are not welcoming this news. We find out why. With hopes of breathing more life into Korea's sluggish economy, the Korean government has unveiled its plan for a fiscal stimulus package. This decision comes as the Korean economy faces strong risk factors both at home and abroad. Ari Kim Min-ji starts us off. The Korean government is vowed to introduce a 20 trillion won or roughly 17 billion U.S. dollar stimulus package to tackle external uncertainties and boost job creation. Laying out the direction of its economic policy for the second half of the year, the finance ministry said Tuesday a supplementary budget of roughly $8.5 billion will be part of the stimulus measure. The extra budget will draw primarily from an expected tax surplus this year. The rest of the stimulus package will come in the form of increased investment by state-run companies and other means of spending. By using all possible means, including a supplementary budget, we will respond swiftly to deteriorating short-term uncertainties and get one step ahead in preparing for mid-term risks such as the Brexit. We need an extra budget specifically designed to minimize the impact from external challenges and corporate restructuring. The financial support comes as the Korean government lowers its economic growth forecast for 2016 to 2.8 percent, down from an earlier forecast of 3.1 percent. If the projections are correct, it will mean growth in the 2 percent range for a second straight year. Korea has seen its exports fall every month since last year due to slowing global demand. The country will also start feeling the full-blown impact of the government's nationwide corporate restructuring drive, which is expected to take a toll on employment and production. On top of that, although the fallout from Brexit is expected to have a limited impact on the Korean economy, indirect effects cannot be ruled out if it brings prolonged volatility to the global stock market and weighs on the global economy. The government expects the budget supplement to help the country achieve the growth target set for this year, although the exact size and timing of the injection will be determined after talks with the National Assembly. Kim Min-ji, Business Daily. And the stimulus package was unveiled during a meeting among the president and economy ministers to discuss the country's economic blueprint for the second half of the year. Here, President Bakunin has said reforms and restructuring stand at the center when it comes to improving Korea's economic fundamentals and creating more jobs. The president also called for special measures like an around-the-clock risk management system to monitor and respond to market changes as the global economy continues to deal with the fallout from Britain's exit from the European Union. And noting the need to promote new industries to create growth engines, President Bach promised more deregulation to help boost private investment. And the announcement for fresh stimulus comes on the heels of the Brexit referendum on Friday, which sent shockwaves throughout financial markets around the world, although Korean markets have regained some stability this week. For more on the government's announcement and what Brexit means for Korea, Professor Yang Jun suk from the Catholic University of Korea joins us in the studio today. So good to see you, Professor. Happy to be here. So with hopes of cushioning risks from the Brexit and the ongoing corporate restructuring drive, the Korean government today announced announced plans to draw up a fiscal stimulus package. Now, how is this going to affect Korea's financial markets? And do you think this fresh stimulus package is going to serve its purpose? Well, I think it was necessary, but uh, the devil uh, is in the details. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be very useful or it could be wasted. Uh, to get behind the figures, the, uh, the 20 trillion won figure, the 10 trillion was something that was already budgeted and 10 trillion dollar is additional. Mm. Uh, so in a sense, there's only a 10 trillion won additional money involved. And that's about the same as the supplementary budget we had last year. In fact, it's, I think, slightly less. Mm. And I hate to be sort of a uh, in-betweener here, but my feeling was that we needed something higher than last year. But before, uh, right around the uh, time that Brexit, Brexit hit, some people were arguing 
uh, 25 trillion won supplementary budget. Okay. I thought that was too large, but it should have been somewhere in the middle of the two, but we mm. got it on the low end. Now, uh, we, uh, they just announced the figures and rough ideas of where they're going to spend it on job programs and things like that. Uh, if they spend the money wisely, I think it'll be a much more help than the uh, interest rate cut that we had uh, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need to see the details on that. All right. But the government did say, though, that the Brexit won't really affect Korea's real economy. Do you agree with this? Uh, yes. Uh, the United Kingdom is depending on whether you uh, calculate it in nominal terms or uh, pur uh, purchasing power terms, somewhere between 2.5 to 4 percent of the global economy. Korea's export to UK is only about 1.4 percent. Mm. And even if you include the entire European Union, it's about 10 percent of Korean exports. So uh, if they have a big recession there, it will definitely uh, hit Korea, mm. but it will not hurt uh, that much. Uh, now, uh, the concern is that the uh, UK does have 32 trillion won's worth of investment in Korea in mm. the financial sector. And a lot of people are afraid that if uh, UK is hit with financial panic, then the uh, British will withdraw that investment. Uh, but we, that's what we have the uh, foreign currency reserves for. Mm. Uh, and also, right now, it seems like the UK is not panicking enough to withdraw money from Korea. In fact, I understand that today, UK actually put a bit of more money into Korea. So, oh, okay. Uh, so I think we need to monitor that, but we don't need to be overly concerned about it. Now, what about Korea's free trade agreement with the European Union? I mean, will Korea have to renegotiate its terms, uh, considering that it wants to, I guess, establish a separate uh, to FTA with Britain. I think everybody agrees that legally we do need to renegotiate the EU, uh, Korea EU FTA mm. when uh, UK leaves, but they haven't left yet. Right. And also, uh, once the uh, UK is se once completely separated from the EU, if Korea wants to maintain the free trade relationship with UK, then we do need to se sign a separate mm. uh, Korea uh, UK FTA. Right. But the problem is we don't know exactly what what uh, UK will maintain and UK will give uh, when they separate from the EU. And we're not going to know it until they finish negotiation. What makes this even more complicated is that apparently UK does not have that many trade negotiators. Mm. So their first concern is going to be uh, negotiating with the EU, not Korea. Right. Uh, and Korea won't be able to do any real negotiations with the UK or, and perhaps even with the EU until that negotiation is over. So it may take two or three years. Oh, so that's quite a long time there. Now, we have seen a lot of changes in the global economy with this Brexit. Are there any potential changes, though, that might yield more benefits for the Korean economy from this Brexit? I really can't see any. Yeah. Uh, some people are saying that because the Korean won has depreciated and the Japanese yen has appreciated, it will help Korean companies export and compete with Japanese firms. But if you look at what happened in the last five to seven years, whenever there is a foreign uh, pro economic problem mm -hmm. or whenever uh, the uh, Fed uh, is expected to raise the interest rate. Right. You have a lot of money flowing out of Korea, so Korean currency depreciates. And then whenever you have a foreign crisis, you have the yen going uh, using it as a safe currency, so yen appreciates. But when the uh, problems die down in mm. about a month or two months, everything goes back to normal. So right. what we ended up having is just a whole lot of volatility without any permanent changes in competitiveness. Mm. And I'm afraid that unless uh, things really go badly in Europe, I think that's what's going to happen here. So aside from Korea, what are the prospects for the European Union? Well, the UK is having so many problems right now, I don't even know where to start. Their mm. political structure is falling apart, not just for the ruling party, but also the minority parties as well. Uh, their banks and businesses, they're not in a panic mode, but they're definitely in a contractionary mode. So everybody expects the UK to go into a serious recession. Mm. Uh, and then uh, the at least the global problem, it doesn't seem to be a global problem anymore. The, the day, uh, every day passes by, it becomes more of a European problem and UK problem in spe uh, more specifically. Mm. So uh, while it may, this may be a good news for uh, the global economy, I think it'll be uh, more uh, sad for the UK in the near future. But do you think the long-term benefits will make up for the short-term losses that we're seeing right now? Well, they're not even sure what the long-term benefits are going to be mm. because 
well, they ignore the advice of so-called experts. Uh, and then uh, every gain that they believe that they're going to have right now, either the politicians are mm -hmm. saying, we didn't mean that, or uh, they're saying that this all depends on negotiation with the EU and at least Right now, the EU is taking a hardline position. Right. Uh, so we don't know what the uh, long-term uh, benefits are going to be, and the short-term recession is coming up. Mm, and of course, there are worries that this is this Brexit is going to create a domino effect in the European Union. So, what are some of the other factors that might weigh on the global economy from here on out? Okay, I think everybody's concentrating on the immigration issue. Uh, you have two groups of countries who really want to leave the EU. One is the East European developing countries, mm -hmm. uh, but overall their population seems to be happy with the EU being in the EU because they're getting a lot of sub subsidies because they're the poorer countries mm. in the EU. Uh, it's just that they don't like possibility of immigrants coming in. Yes. So uh, while overall populations are happy, uh, if the immigration issue becomes more uh, serious, especially if they allow Turkey in the mm. union, uh, then the far right parties who want uh, to uh, separate uh, from the EU may have a more uh, bargaining position. Now the advanced countries, a lot of them have problems with the EU, but I don't think they want to go into the panic mode. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the only thing that can cause them to uh, try to separate from the EU is again the immigration issue. Okay. So as long as the immigration issue is kept quiet, I think while the advanced countries may have more uh, uh, things that they don't like about mm -hmm. the EU, they're going to keep quiet. Okay. Uh, so as long as the immigration issue doesn't come up, I don't see that much chance of a domino effect. All right. Thank you so much for your insight today, Professor. Thank you. Korea's consumer sentiment remained sluggish this month as uncertainties grew both in, in and outside of the country, with the index coming in at 99 in June, unchanged from May. The Bank of Korea says the figure last month ended a two-month upward streak in March and April. The monthly index reflects the overall economic outlook of consumers, their living conditions, and future spending plans. A reading below 100 means pessimists outnumber optimists. Within the economy, the government's push to overhaul Korea's struggling industries played a large part in dampening consumer outlook. Korea ranks 14th on a survey measuring mobile internet access in 134 countries. According to the Mobile Connectivity Index released on Tuesday by the GSMA, Korea scored 80.7 out of 100 in four areas of mobile internet connectivity, which are infrastructure, affordability, consumer readiness, and content. What's noticeable is that Korea topped the rankings for its mobile infrastructure and came in eighth place for consumer affordability, but earned lower scores for consumer readiness and content. Meanwhile, Australia ranked on top with 84.7 points, while Singapore came in just one spot above Korea in 13th place, making it the highest ranking Asian country on the list. The GSMA, GSMA is an international trade association that represents over 250 companies in the global telecommunications sector. Panama celebrated a new milestone this week, the grand opening of an expanded Panama Canal, and with it, hopes for a new era in global shipping. But as people there celebrate the nine-year effort, Korean shippers are dreading an economic hit to their already light pockets. Our Eunice Kim explains why. Music and fireworks fill the skies of Panama on Sunday local time to celebrate the official opening of an expanded Panama Canal. The Panama Canal 102 years ago connected two oceans. Today it connects the present and the future. Officials have high hopes for the 80-kilometer waterway that links the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic. The $5.4 billion expansion can accommodate the passing of much bigger ships, nearly tripling its maximum capacity from 5,000 containers to 14,000. The goal is to secure 98 percent of the world's shipping traffic. But of course, this comes at a time when the shipping industry as a whole has been sputtering. 
And while the expanded route will indeed cut travel time for Korean shippers, they're concerned about a different prospect, a further dropping profit margin. Ultimately, the worry is that freight charges will fall more on top of the oversupply. Consider this. Before the expansion, more than half of Hyundai Merchant and Hanjin Shipping's 161 vessels were unable to pass through the Panama Canal. But now they all will be able to, also true for their global competitors. In fact, according to one estimate, the wider waterway is expected to give shipments from North America's east coast a 9% bump. But the number of ships to fill those orders is to eclipse that at 12 percent. Which is why experts are calling on Korean shippers to update their fleet by building larger vessels with the support of the government if they don't want to have the rear of Chinese transporters as their view. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. And that does it for today. But we'll be back tomorrow with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. So don't forget to tune in then. Thanks for watching and see you soon.